Our guest this morning is the celebrated son of celebrated show business parents, Rick Nelson. Do you regard yourself, Rick, as a, a musician or an actor, a combination of the both? Well, really, at, at the fir at start, I started off as an actor. You know, I, I started on radio when I was eight, and then uh, went into television. And, and when I was 16, I recorded the, the first record that I had. So, uh, I don't know. I think, it, you know, I'd like to think of myself as a combination of the two. Your songs always reflect a great deal about yourself, a lot of autobiographical stuff. Is it your feeling that, along with most writers, that is, people who write prose or, or fiction, that the best things to write about the things that you yourself have lived and feel? Yeah, I, I really do. They're, they're by far the easiest things to write about. And uh, it, that's about the only way you have to, to call upon something is to, to write a song, you know, that you've experienced with, uh, about, you know, write something that you have, uh, you know, like Garden Party was a, a very personal experience, and it was also a, a real easy song to write, you know. Well, some people find it difficult to, uh, you know, to, to let the veils down. They don't think outside people should see inside them. You apparently had a personal statement to make, particularly in a garden party, and, and you made it. Yeah, that's true. Well, it was a, a kind of a learning process that night for me, and uh, it was something that I kind of wanted to get out of my system. Of course, the reference was to your... Uh, against your better judgment, appearing at Madison Square Garden a couple of years ago in right. a, quote, a rock revival. And you, uh, you was against your better judgment. Yeah, it really was. I, I, I didn't want to do it at first, and they'd been after me to do one for about two years. And uh, I thought, well, you know, there's going to be 22,000 people there, so we can throw in some new songs, maybe, and, and everything. But as it turned out, we didn't, uh, we played all old songs, and they just sort of stared at us. And it was a very, it was a strange experience, really. It was about, what well, was about six months ago that we played there. Did it, uh, did it bring you down the reaction or the lack of reaction to the crowd? Uh, n no, not really, because it was so, uh, you know, there, the, it was almost, when they booed, it was kind of a nice thing, you know. Why? So, well, it was a reaction. You know, the thing, there was no reaction at all. Right. So that, that's what was so strange about the whole evening, because we played old songs. You, uh, among the interesting statements you make in that song, Garden Party, which is selling like crazy, of course, is you say, you have a line in there, you can't please everyone, so you've got to please yourself. Now, Polonius said it in Shakespeare, he says, you know, to thine own self be true, which is uh, what you're saying in that song. That's true, yeah. That's, that's what I believe in, and all that did that evening was sort of renew you know, my faith in myself, you know, in my beliefs. So, uh, you know, like I say, it, it was something that was, a, I took a negative thing that looked sort of negative, and it, well, it was, you know, nobody wants to get booed. You, you know, know it turned it into a positive thing. I was talking to some of your people when you were, during your performance and before your performance here in Louisville, and one of your relatives, as a matter of fact, uh, to whom you've given gainful employment, I take it. Yes, that's right. Uh, your cousin <laughs> Willie Nelson. A good-looking dude too, and he said that here's uh, Rick has been in show business 24 years out of his 32 years in in there. And you know, you get your Mickey Rooney's and your Judy Garlands and your people who have grown up being Hollywood brats and so forth with great traumas and sometimes with psychological st uh, scars. And from what I learned about you, you seem to have a rather direct way of uh, an unaffected way of life. That all that hullabaloo being celebrated when you were even in high school or at elementary school has left you pretty much uh, without any of those scars or, or even affectations. Well, that's true. I have a few strange habits, but I wouldn't, <laughs> I'd rather not go into that right now. <clears throat> we, we went to public high school yeah. and schools all the way through the, uh, the years, you know, and, uh, you know, had friends outside of show business. So it was, and we were all so busy working on the show that we never really got to to uh, go to the Hollywood parties and things like that that, uh, that maybe you're speaking of. You know, when you do, right. when, when they were filming those, move, those pictures, I guess they had, you know, they were under contract to uh, different studios right. at the time, and they used to have big parties, and, you know, you'd hear about it. They also had very pushy uh, Hollywood, quote, mothers and fathers. I assume that Ozzie and Harriet were unlike that. Yeah, that's true. They, they were, uh, you know, my father has, still has a, a lot of energy 
and drive really. And he he really he put the show together and ran the show and he was a director and producer and everything and and uh, so but it was a different thing. It was like we made the decision to be on the show. You know, it wasn't their idea for us to be on the show. And it was, you know, they left all the decisions concerning us to, up to us. So uh, my brother and myself. So it, it was kind of a different situation, really, than having someone, you know, behind you saying, go up there and smile and, you know, kiss a director. Right, right. Right. There is such a thing, though, as being together almost too much. And I hear you, you lived at home, you and your brother David. Your folks were in the show, they owned the show, and you were in the cast together, and you're, when you made them, you must have been together in the daytime, and then you'd come home at night. Did that ever get to be a, a chore, or was it just a nice kind of a bonus for you? No, it was... Uh, it was a, a nice thing. I never really thought about it. I thought of doing the show as, as a, sort of a job after school, you know, because uh, I had to go to school. I thought of school as being a job. <laughs> yeah, but, but uh, you know, it was something that was always there, and I knew it was there, and I really didn't think of it that way. And what it caused us to do is really get much closer together as a family, you know. The reason I'm inclined to... Uh, to agree with you and believe that what you're saying is exact, exactly right, that you did not have really an artificial Hollywood upbringing, except that you made a lot of money and were celebrated, so that I remember that you were a pretty good teenage tennis player. And I remember you coming here to the National Juniors not too many years ago, and you hit a pretty good stick, as I recall. Well, yeah, I used to like tennis a lot. I mean, I still do, but I don't have the chance to play it, you know. And, uh, since I started singing, which was quite a while ago, uh, I had to, you know, I dropped out of, of the, the tennis thing because, like, you know, I couldn't do both, really. But uh, I've good? always enjoyed playing tennis. And I did. I played in, uh, in Louisville. Sure. Yeah. I remember it was, it's a strange experience because it's, it's on, uh, is it clay? Or it was yes, clay. Yes, sure. You know, and all the guys from the Los Angeles, That's they right, never play. get a chance to play on, on clay. They play on concrete, a hard yeah. surface. So it's... Uh, it's a big, it's a big it's difference big in the game, so. but I, I don't know whether a, a tennis racket will ever take a place in your affections that a guitar has, as a matter of fact. No, really, I, I really enjoy what I do, so uh, I feel very fortunate. Really. You have an interesting way. Now, your audience, when you were here, played here Sunday, loved it. You got so many curtain calls and ovations, and people kept calling you back. I notice you have a very unadorned, unstagey type of performance. You don't go with... Uh, coordinated costumes with you and your backup, your colleagues, the Stone Canyon Band. You don't have tricky steps and choreography and lights. You, you say what you're going to play and you tune and it's a very direct way. Is, is that done on purpose? Well, yeah, it is because I think that uh, the majority of people are, are there to really listen to the songs that you want to do rather than see a, an actual stage show, you know, because uh, well, to get a stage show together would cost too much money, you know, hire all those girls and balloons and stuff. And I just, for some reason, I just feel very much more comfortable being direct, you know, and, and talking to the people. And do you have any that way. professional advisors, or do you do what you think is musically tasteful? I mean, do you say to somebody, a music coach or a producer or somebody, you know, what should be the order of our of our songs, certain tempo songs should follow others? Not really, you know, I've always had the, uh, the luxury of being able to, to pick and choose my material, and, uh, and the same goes with the show, you know, I, and the pace of the show is left up to me, but I have to take the blame for it too, you know, if it doesn't work out. But I'd rather have it that way than have someone telling me something, you know. Who do you I admire wouldn't... most in the entertainment music world today? I don't know, I'll tell you, there are so many really great musicians out now. You know, it's not like, when I first started, it was like back in 56, and uh, there were really just a handful of like good guitar players and, that you could name. But now there are just so many, you know, they, and the equipment has gotten so much better. So I don't, I don't really have one favorite, you know, that's, it depends on what type of music you're talking about. You know, I like, uh, I like Bob Dylan. I admire Bob Dylan as a songwriter. You're into the writing more yourself recent years, too, aren't Yeah, you? I really am, and it's a relatively new type of thing for me, and it's, uh, it's really interesting. You know? And you don't make your own shirts, that's... Not no, that's, that's, a, that's a fallacy. This is, <laughs> this is stolen <laughs> off a Holiday Inn 
bed sheet there. I'm sure they're pleased to have you wearing it. Thank you very much. Rick. Thank you very much. So nice to have you on Omelet this morning. And our guest has been Rick Nelson. To him, many thanks. We'll be back to tell you more about the program in just a moment. <laughs>